Hey everybody, welcome back. Thank you for joining us today. We've got a really great story and I hope you all have had a great week. I hope you're excited about things that are going on. Some of you might have started school this week. Uh, I hope that's gone well for you and I hope that you are enjoying that and staying safe, but also getting to make new friends and getting to be the light of Jesus in your classrooms and in your schools. Um, it is a new month, so that means we have a new member verse. So let's read it. It comes from the book of Colossians and it says, for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. And he is before all things and in him all things hold together. That's Colossians 1, 16 and 17. And now I have a song for that.
Awesome job singing and dancing to those songs, guys. I saw the wardrobe of wonder there. Could you see what was in it? Here, wait, let's put it back up here. Is that a packet of seeds? Looks like some flower seeds, maybe, or some vegetable seeds. I wonder what seeds have to do with today's story. Let's find out what's in today's. Hey, welcome back guys. I am excited that we are getting back into God's Word today and I want to encourage you to go get your Bibles. We're going to be in Genesis, so the very first book of the Bible, so go get it. Um, we're going to be right at the beginning, so Genesis 1, 2, and 3 is what we're going to cover today. So we've got a lot of ground to cover. Go get your Bible, go get your parent if they're going to watch with you, and we're going to dive in. Um, so before we get there, let's go ahead and pray, all right? God, thank you for today. Thank you for your word and thank you for um, the story that you're going to share today. God, I pray that it would find it, itself and plant itself deep in each of the kids' hearts that here is it today and that they would know that you are the creator and that you love us so much um, and we'll find out more about your story. Uh, and God, we just pray that you would help us to see our place in that. God, we love you. Amen. All right, so what is your favorite animal when you visit the zoo? Do you love like the zebras or the lions or the tigers or the snakes? I, my favorite is the giraffe. I love getting to see the giraffe. So it was one time, one time me and my kids, uh, we were at the Dallas Zoo. I think it was the Dallas Zoo. And you get to feed the giraffes. And so you're in this really tall thing and you get to feed it lettuce and stuff. And the giraffes are like, in your face and it's super cool it was a lot of fun um but yeah giraffes are my favorite what are your favorite animals to see at the zoo 
And those are awesome. Well, who created all of those animals? That's right, God did. So today's story, we, like I said a little bit ago, we are going all the way back to the beginning. And we're gonna talk about that God created everything. So what does it say all that he created, right? So in Genesis 1, it says in the beginning, which some of us may have heard over and over and over and over again. Um, but in the beginning, it says that God created our world, right? He gave it days and nights. He gave it land and sea. So all the land that we live on and all the oceans, right? He filled it with plants, trees, and vegetables, and fruit, and all those things. And then it said that he put the sun and the moon in its place so that it would provide light for us in the day from the sun. And you know how the moon can light it up at night so that we have light in the day and at night, right? And then after he put all the, he put all the animals in their place, so all the land animals and all the fish and stuff in the sea and stuff in the air, right? Including the giraffe, my favorite, and your favorite animals, right? He put all those things into their proper places, right? And then what does it say? And we're gonna look at verse 26, Genesis 1, 26. And it, then it says, then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. So it means that they're gonna be like in charge over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and every creeping creature that creeps on the earth, right? So we are in charge of our, everything. God made us to to be in charge of everything on, on earth, right? And so one, that's awesome. Two, did you pick up on that? So God has been creating all these things and it's just talking about him. It says he does all these things and it says it is good, it is good, right? But it, when he creates man, it says let us, us, which means more than one. So usually if you're talking about your family, like, hey, us, like, or your group of friends or your, or your, your family is us more than one. So. I wonder if there's a little bit of a hint there that God is more than just one, right? Did you know we serve a triune God, which means he's three in one. So we have, we talk about God the Father a lot. We talk about Jesus as the Son, and then God the Holy Spirit, right? So we have these three parts, and here they all, all three of them are. So this is showing us that Jesus is in the very beginning of everything, right? So then we move on to chapter two, right? And so God's done creating everything. And so, and it's, it starts out with one saying that he rests. All right, so now if you have your Bible, go to verse two or verse four in chapter two and read with me. I'm gonna read verses four through 10. Okay, so Genesis two, four starts out with, these are the generations of the heaven and the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no bush of the field was yet in the land and no small plant of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the land, and there was no man to work the ground, and a mist was going up from the land and was watering the whole face of the earth. Then the Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils, so into his nose, the breath of life, and the man became a living creature. So we're seeing here that God had created man, but man wasn't living yet, right? And none of the plants, nothing had really started living it until God had to breathe life into it, right? So it says, um, he breathed the life, breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils and the man became a living creature. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east and there he put the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground, the Lord God made, the, made to spring up every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So we, some of you have heard this story, some of you haven't, but this is where everything started. Okay, God does all these things, creates all these things, breathes life into man and, and puts man in charge in the garden of taking care of all these things, right? Man, what? how cool is it that God did all this and then creates us in his, in his image and then puts us in charge of these things, right? God is so powerful, right? So God has created everything, planted all this garden and puts Adam in there to take care of it. And so God then realizes that Adam needs a helper, right? Adam can't do all this on his own. So God being so powerful and so cool that he is, right? He brings every animal by Adam and trying to, is looking for a helper for Adam. But he's also gave Adam a really cool job. You know what job he gave Adam? I think this would be a really fun job. And I think Adam did an excellent job, right? 
he has Adam name every single animal. It'd probably get a little tiring. There's a ton of animals out there, right? But he gives Adam this cool job of naming animals. And after all the animals walk by and Adam names all of them, God sees that he doesn't have a suitable helper for him, right? So what God does, as we see <clears throat> in further along in chapter two, is that he puts Adam in a, into a deep sleep and takes one of his ribs out and goes, <clears throat> takes a rib out and creates Eve, right? And Adam's like, whoa, this is awesome. Eve is perfect for me, right? And so after that, do, do Adam and Eve live happily ever after in the garden? No. So God gives them one rule in the garden. Does anybody know what that, that rule is? Right. He says, you can eat from any tree, any plant in the garden, but you never eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Right. And so there's just one rule. It feels like it shouldn't be that hard to follow that one rule, right? Unfortunately, it is. You know, just like when when your parents are like, hey, I just made some fresh cookies. I'm going to leave them here on the counter to cool. Don't touch them. Even though they, you can smell them, they look really good. But he's like, hey, God says, do not eat from this tree. Okay? So along comes a snake, right? And I don't, I don't love snakes. They, they're creepy, they crawl on the ground. I don't really understand how they can move. Um, and they are a little bit scary, right? So we, uh, in the story we see a snake comes along and asks Eve, what does it say to Eve? Does anybody know? Right, it said, did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And, Eve's like, and Eve gives the right answer. He's like, yeah, God said we can eat from anything but that one tree. Right, and then God, and then and then the serpent kind of twists God's words a little bit, okay, and, and tries to convince Eve, like, hey, God doesn't want you to do that because he doesn't want you to be God, right? If you eat from that tree, you, you could be pretty much like God. So the serpent twists God's words and convinces Eve that, like, if she eats from the tree, she'll be like God, which is not the case, right? So what happens? Right, Adam and Eve take a bite from the fruit, from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? And it says immediately they're ashamed, right? They realize that they're naked and then they, they figure out some clothes and they're ashamed, right? And then not long after that, we know God comes along and he is, the, the relationship prior to this is they were, they were in communion together. They, where their relationship was healthy um, and their relationship was two ways, right? They had clear communication with God and God had clear communication with them. But as soon as they do this, that messed that up, that broke that communication up, that broke that relationship. Okay, and God comes in, he's like, hey, Adam, where are you, right? And just by saying that, we know God knows that something, something had happened, something is wrong. Adam is hiding okay and have you any of you ever you can maybe raise your hand a little bit if you don't want your parents to see but have you any of you ever done something you know you shouldn't have done but your parents are like hey what's going on and you're like and you maybe go hide or you break something you're like oh i'm just gonna go hide i, I did it as a kid i remember uh me and my friends were playing with like a tennis ball or something in the garage and i threw it against the wall and it bounced around and knocked a light out and made a light fall and shatter in the garage one time and I like just ran off and hid as if they weren't gonna figure out what happened. Um, have you ever done that? Yeah, I don't know why that's the reaction, but that's exactly what Adam and Eve do. They go, they run and hide. They go hide and tell, and God's like, hey, where are you? Okay, he, he wants that relationship with us, but they were hiding because they knew they had messed up. They were ashamed of what they had done, right? And so <clears throat> let's read in, in Genesis, we're gonna move up to chapter three. Um, in verse 15, okay, so when God talks to them and gets to them, right, and he is basically, he curses the serpent and tells him to, that he'll forever crawl around on the ground and, and everyone, no one's gonna like him, right? Just like, we don't like snakes, I don't like snakes. Okay, and he also kicks Adam and Eve out of the garden, right? But listen to what God tells to the snake, right? So the snake is Satan in this story, right? He says, I will put in enmity, which is like, um, friction or it's going to be like a battle between you and the woman 
right? And between your offspring and her offspring, and he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. In some, in some versions it says you will, he will crush your head and you will bruise his heel, right? Did anybody know who that's talking about? So that's saying offspring. So some children of Eve are going to crush the head of the serpent. Does anybody know who we're talking about there? Jesus. He's, this is God saying like, hey, I'm going to send my son eventually and he is going to crush you, right? And so one, this is a promise from God right here saying that everything is going to be okay eventually, right? But right now, our relationship with God, Adam and Eve's relationship with God is broken until Jesus returns. And that's the promise that we get to live in today because you know what? We know that Jesus comes. We know that Jesus lived a perfect life. We know that Jesus was was crucified, right? And we also know that he conquered death and rose again, okay? And so now we are, and he ascended into heaven, right? And so now we are waiting on his return to judge the earth. But we know for a fact that through Jesus, we the relationship between us and God has been made has been made perfect again because when we accept Jesus into our hearts, God sees us as as Jesus. He sees us as a um, as a follower of Him because Jesus accepted our sin in in our place, right? And so that's the promise from today that we have a deliverer that God will rescue His children, and He promises it here in the beginning, and He will continue to promise that throughout the stories as we continue um, going through the Bible this year. Um, guys, this is an awesome story. I hope um, that you can understand it. I hope that today's activities help drive it home. Um, we are praying for you and we are excited to, to begin our story, the Big God story for this year with you. Um, we love you and we are excited to see you at Outdoor Church over the next few weeks. And then we are gonna be moving back indoors with children's ministry in October and we will have more information on that soon. So let me pray and then we will we'll be done. God, thank you for this story. Thank you for your promise from the very beginning that you were gonna send your son Jesus God. And we are thankful for um, your your promises that you um, always follow through with God. You never break a promise uh, and this promise came true God. We know that Jesus um, was born. We know that he lived a perfect life. We know that he was um, crucified on the cross God, we know that he conquered death and then he, he ascended into heaven to sit at your right hand, God. And we pray, uh, I pray right now that every child that's listening to this um, would believe that, would understand it, and would, would follow you wholeheartedly, God. Uh, it's in your name that we pray. Amen. All right, guys, thank you. Have a great week. See ya. Guys, thank you for joining us this week. I hope you all have a wonderful week going forward. Um, we would love to see you at our outdoor services every Sunday at 9 a.m. weather uh, permitting um, and we are going to go back indoors um, in October so keep an eye out uh, tell your parents to look in their emails we'll have more information coming soon uh, about when we are going to have children's ministry on a Sunday morning at the Boys and Girls Club uh, like we used to so get excited for that and we can't wait to see you love you guys bye bye